Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Director's Commentary. Uh, we are discussing Season 1, Episode 10 <laughs> of One with Wolfpack Football. It is entitled Pride, and I hope you enjoy it. Thanks. Nice little, uh, little drone footage. I wish I had the opportunity to use, uh, utilize more drone footage, but just didn't. I basically, you know, I do have a team. I do have a team that works on this show with me. Um, it's very much in an unofficial uh, capacity, though. Like, I am the only person who is paid to um, work on this show, other than my co-producer, um, Tony Haynes. So everyone else, either I just happen to collaborate with, like the people on staff at NC State, um, mainly their help comes into play when it comes to the actual game, covering of the game, because um, obviously there's more than one camera angle, and that's that ends up being them. Um, but I do have a team of interns uh, and production assistants. For this particular uh, season, um, they were unpaid interns. Um, just the way the budget worked out. I wish I could could have paid him, but had a team of three, uh, Savannah, uh, Johnson and Gabby. Um, and they all helped out, um, in very unique ways. They all had different skill sets, which is, it, it's kind of cool. Um, kind of cool to have a team like that because you need to get them to, uh, show off different strengths, um, and maybe learn a little bit more in some of their weaker areas. So, uh, yeah, show big shout out to them for helping out. Um, every episode y'all so this episode coming up is interesting i um i once we get to the game <laughs> i will talk about uh a story i've told many times uh off mic about my experience being at notre dame for the first time um it is uh it is interesting to say the least um as well, it was kind of cool to learn that um, sideline reporter Holly Rowe was going to cover this uh, this game between NC State and Notre Dame, and as a part of her research, uh, ended up watching a couple episodes of our show. Um, and she and she tweeted about it. And I thought that was really cool uh, that she loved the show. Not only was she watching it uh, for research, but she said it was really good. I was like, that's pretty dope to have someone. Um, of that notoriety, just just give praise to a thing I'm making. It was really cool. And sp speed of high praise, there was a flash frame in there of uncorrect, uncolor corrected footage. Hopefully, no one noticed. <laughs> oh man, humbling for a variety of reasons. <laughs> so, yeah, this should be interesting. I had never been to um, to Notre Dame before. Uh, because they didn't become kind of a regular, uh, semi-regular ACC opponent until uh, the year prior um, to this. So. Don't make anything more than one thing. You got to be better than you were in the last game. The acronym pride, because I don't look at it as a word. Oh, this is a good one. I like that. I forgot that that was an acronym. Personal responsibility and and uh, daily excellence. I think that's a really unique approach to the word pride. Um, other than like to have pride in something, you know, it's kind of cool breaking it down into that acronym as a as a motivator for um, these student athletes and even these coaches to just. Uh, be the best they can be every day or attempt to be, try to be the best they can be every day. So a lot of, um, there's a lot of misconceptions around people. Um, there's a lot, excuse me. There's a lot of misconceptions from people who are not around athletics that, these guys, um, they're, these student athletes, any student athlete gets kind of a, a break 
um, when it comes to their grades. I think, I don't know where that started, um, but seeing everything that goes into this program, seeing everything these guys go through is very much not that. Um, do they get additional help, like additional resources in order to improve their grades? Absolutely. Um, but it's because they have those outside of class responsibilities that they are then provided with a little more assistance. And that doesn't include a 10 point grade roundup. It includes uh, like tutoring and oversight, stuff like that. So there's Des Kitchings. He is currently offensive coordinator at Virginia. I say that with a question mark. So I'm going to look it up on my phone while I continue to talk. <laughs> Um, Coach Kitchings is actually uh, at the at the time of this interview had been at NC State longer than Coach Doran. He was a running backs coach under the previous uh, coaching administration with uh, Tom O'Brien. So it's kind of cool, uh, kind of neat to see him be there for uh, as long as he was um, in the same position, uh, doing a good job. Oh, I was enjoying micing him up. Because he's such like a nice guy, and then to hear him coach is so fun. Um, I don't know if it's his accent, but he's got kind of like a, it's like a folksy coaching mentality, which I think a lot of the guys really respect because it sounds both authoritative and friendly, um, which is really cool. Okay, yeah, Desmond Ketchings, offensive coordinator, UVA football. Okay, I got it right. <laughs> so this week, this theme fried, um, not only uh, is it cool for that acronym that we talked about earlier, personal responsibility and daily excellence, but it gave me an opportunity to explore what um, people might be proud of. Uh, both coaches and student athletes, what they might, they individually might be proud of. Um, whether it's their work, whether it's their family, whether it's a certain uh, value system they have. Um, again, adding further more to, these are not just images you see on TV. These are actual people. Personal best. To, yeah, like it's it's kind of it's kind of this weird. Um, that was a rough cut off. It was not edited well. <laughs> that was my fault. But I uh, t taking these little uh, these broader team goals and trying to break them down on an incremental personal level. I think it's interesting um, in a good way. Interesting in a good way because it uh, it allows them to have more tangible goals in order to achieve broader excellence. So this is Steph Lewis. His parents came from Haiti. And I felt like that was important um, to showcase this kind of story, this having this this familial pride. I think I want to say that looking at this now, I think this particular interview with Steph Lewis made me realize that I could do more interviews like this. Like I could find more personal material for these, uh, for these student athletes. I mean, we've done interviews before earlier in the season. I, I immediately, I'm just thinking of, uh, our Sean Boone interview about his family being from Florida. And I think that was kind of like an attempt to try and, um, 
showcase some emotionality of these players. But I think that one for me fell flat. And it's it was all in the execution. Like, I don't think I did it enough justice. And then obviously with the last episode with Darren Roseborough and having his father pass away, like, that was something I really wanted to dive more into but it was up to it was like a resource and time standpoint couldn't do that this was the one that i was like okay this is kind of like i like doing this like mixed media like video photos and i think just this was this was the one that i did i was like okay yes i like doing this i can do this it's not the attempts that I've had were just attempts toward a successful version of the attempt and not just constant attempts and constant falling short. So yeah, I thought this one came together pretty well. As short as it was, I think it was good though. <laughs> I love this. Here we go. We are playing at Notre Dame. Ah, uh, Notre Dame. A little Celtic music in the background. Thought that was fun. So the University of Notre Dame in South Bend, Indiana. They're uh, they're named after a, a French cathedral, and their mascot is the Fighting Irish. Um, so yeah, that's uh. I don't know what to draw from that, but that's, <laughs> that's right. my mixed relationship with this university. So here's the thing. I had never been to this stadium before. A lot of our staff had not been to this stadium before. We haven't really interacted with anyone um, at the University of Notre Dame. So one of the things I have to do, uh, or one of my responsibilities, before I arrive at an opposing stadium, um, I have to figure out where um, our high angle camera can be set up at an opposing um, person stadium. And normally the video coordinators I work with, um, normally it is uh, these guys, HUD and Brett, they are great. Um, they're not at state anymore, but uh, when I was there, they were there. Video coordinators, basically they're in charge of coaches film, but they have a lot of student helpers and they're managing teams and they're in charge of placing their students where they need to be in order to capture the right film. And so I haven't asked them, hey, could you do the same for my high angle camera that I need? And they say, absolutely, because they're awesome. So they email someone at the University of Notre Dame Football. Um, we get a confir confirmation email back about where we can set up. And it is in this, um, they tell us this unused uh, student radio booth up in the media tower and it's the it's opposite um from the home side so the angle would be kind of upside down like the notre dame logo would be upside down the other side of the field i said no problem so we show up trying to find out where we're going find out exactly where the room we're supposed to be in open it up and i'm setting up i'm setting everything up i'm setting the camera i got the tripod i got one of the helpers with me and we're um it's like two doors down from our radio booth, our visiting radio booth, which I was like, oh, this is perfect placement. So I run an XLR cable from the radio booth uh, into my camera. Um, for those of you who don't know, XLR cable just carries audio information. And the cable ends up going in, into the hallway and I don't want anybody to trip over it. So I tape it against the corner, uh, corner of the wall on the floor setting everything up and then I'm in the I'm in the booth and from outside I hear where is Taylor Adams and I hear and I'm like oh I'm I'm in here and this guy comes around he's got a suit on he's like you Taylor I said yeah and he said what are you doing and I said I uh I'm I'm, I'm setting up our camera for the coaches show and he goes we well, can't be in here i said oh well i've got this uh i've got this email confirmation from someone on staff that says this is where we are supposed to be um and he takes a look at the email and says well you can't be in here and I, i'm trying to figure out why i was like okay well 
well, where are we supposed to be? Like, this is, we were told we can be set up here. Um, there was actually, we were told the booth wouldn't be used, but it is used by student media. And so they actually show up before this guy in the suit and they're confused. And, but they end up agreeing with us that we can share the booth because our camera guy doesn't make noise. He's just filming. So we're at this, we're at this, uh, impasse and the guy in the suit just won't let up. Like he won't allow us to be there despite the fact I've got confirmation that we can be there. I've got approval from the people using the booth that are in there. We can be there. And then he gets mad that I'm ruining the walls of his brand new media center. I'm like, what? I'm, I'm sorry. What do you mean? And he's pointing to the fact that I've taped down for safety precautions, this XLR cable up against the bottom of a wall, like the corner where the wall and the floor meet. That's where it's taped. He's so upset at me about this. And I'm like, it's, it's gaff tape. It, it comes up and it doesn't tear anything off. It's not a, it's not a big deal. And I'm having to man this while also trying to figure out where exactly I can be when I'm down on the field and everything. And when things are happening, I've, you know, I've arrived early, but I've got stuff to do. And so what ends up happening because I don't know if it's because I'm a pushover or I really just hit a wall with this guy. I was like, well, where can we go? He said, you can go outside. I was like, outside where? And he takes us to this corner. So you're seeing this high angle right here. We are filming from the corner of the end zone from up high, which is from my personal opinion is that that's unacceptable. Like that is not a good angle in order to, in order to capture everything that's going on on the field. And I told, I was just, and it was cold and it was raining and I felt really bad for our student helper that was up there trying to do everything. Cause he was being battered with the elements, man. I felt so bad, but so that is why I have a mixed relationship with Notre Dame is because they don't know how to communicate with their own people. And so they take it out on me. Um, but now I will say something positive about Notre Dame is that when you go up there for a basketball game, uh, which I might touch on when we get to our basketball show, is that the assigned, the assigned security personnel outside of, your, of, outside of the visiting locker room become your fans. Like you walk out and they're like, go Wolfpack, and they throw up the sign and everything like that. So that's really neat. I think it's a nice touch to make a visiting team feel like at home. But with football, it's a different story. So it's a whole thing. So yeah, the weather was the weather was wild. It was just like it never like downpoured, but it was just kind of this constant wet mist in in forty degree weather. So not the most comfortable in the world. Um, my fingers were definitely a little numb by the end of the game. Um, so yeah, <laughs> that Notre Dame story still irks me to this day, but. Excuses, right? <laughs> Got to overcome it. You guys know that wasn't your best. Nope. All you got to do is play together. Smarter football. It's going to be beautiful when you come back and win this game. I do like the contrast of, uh, of these colors. The red and white against the blue and gold on a green field. It does look, I think, really cool. Really vibrant. Very, um, it's nice variety. Nice visual variety. Well, that's a good bench stuff, I feel like, this uh, this episode. Lots of good action. So, this was a moment where the first half was kind of even. And we were definitely uh, doing well in the first half. So, I wanted to showcase that. Also, wanted to showcase how close it was. So, overall, the tempo, the music was kind of upbeat. Because this game ends up in a loss and it doesn't end up being incredibly close. I wanted to have this kind of like softer piano, like more melancholy music underneath it. While the tempo of the highlights was the same. 
Like, I like that. I like, I love contrast. I love stuff that like is something that it isn't, if that makes sense. Like, like a broken TV in the middle of the woods. Like they don't go together, but there's something aesthetically about it that makes sense. So with this, it's more melancholy music. There's a slow beat underneath it. There's a couple of highlights from us, but overall this game did not go well. And so I think it gives it kind of an introspective um, feel to it to think about, especially with pride, like what, what do we have to do better to be, what do we have, what does the team have to do to be, be better, you know? And I know it's sad, but slow motion footage of people walking, it's just, it looks good. But what's even better is slow motion footage of people celebrating, which is what I always prefer. Cause I want this team to win. These moments where I film losses, I've, I've mentioned it before, but some, a lot of times there's a lot more insight because it is about reflection and insight as opposed to, hey, we did well, dope. Um, again, I always want these guys to win. <laughs> but from a narrative standpoint, a loss has its value narratively. I wonder why this is Steph talking about his injury. I wonder why I put it in the last segment. I don't know what I was doing there. So, if anybody watching this or listening to this went to Notre Dame or is a Notre Dame fan, I have nothing against you. <laughs> if you were that guy, that kicked me out. We should talk. There was days where I didn't want to come in and do any rehab or lift any weights, but I know like I if I was not doing it, I was gonna let my family down. Yeah, why did I put this in the last segment? You know, they say you don't really know what you got until you lose it. And that was something for me because I've been playing football since I was five years old and I've been playing every year. It's tough doing these six years out, you know. I think what probably what I'm imagining is that I'm looking at uh, these interviews that I'm cutting together, the stuff that goes together best, like Steph talking about his family, taking pride in his family. I think that goes with coach Kitching's segment talking about what pride means. And I think that the injury stuff about him, about him coming back from an injury is important does make sense, but isn't necessarily, doesn't have enough connected tissue. So that's what I put at the end, I think. Thank y'all so much for joining me today on another episode of Director's Commentary. I drop these videos every Tuesday and Friday. So if you wanna stay up to date on those, go ahead and hit subscribe as well as hitting the bell so you get a notification every time I do drop one. If you have any questions or comments about anything you saw today or any filmmaking or sports, <laughs> go ahead and leave a comment in the comments section because that's where they go and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And if you want to help further support some of the stuff that I'm making, whether it's these, whether it's storytelling videos, whether it's podcast stuff, go ahead and check out the Patreon link in the description below. Uh, yeah, it'll mean the world if you decided to become a patron. Okay, thanks so much and I'll see you all next time.